Hey, as promised, I was going to hop on here and do a live with my friend um, Jolie at Fashion Trends and Friends, and I think I see her coming in. So, um, we have a couple other people joining us. This is going to be fun. I'm trying to wave to you guys. Okay, I got Jolie coming in right now. Where? She should be here any second. Uh, just be patient with us. You know technology, you guys. There she is. Hey, hey girl, look at you all sassy in your hat. <laughs> it's like, this is like my, my favorite hat because it's so out of the box for me that I'm like, okay, I'm going to be, I actually, I'm turning into a hat lady. I'm not going to lie. So this is I my, I love it. It looks you. awesome on you. I'm so well, not a hat person, but I see people like you wearing them. It's like, I wish I was, it looks so good on you. Thank love you. It. Thanks. Love it. I wasn't always a hat lady, but this is what got me started. This one a couple of years ago. And so I'm just kind of collecting. Anyways, awesome. I'm so excited to be here with you, you, you know, and share. And um, I, I, I want to just start with, um, first of all, a little disclaimer that neither one of us are healthcare professionals in any way. Um, we're just simply here to share what we feel works best for us personally. And we realize at the end of the day, nothing is a one size fits all. And so we just thought we would share a little bit of our journey, each of us, and, um, you know, uh, just kind of what we do. And then maybe at the end, Julie, um, we can share like tips that are just kind of universal, you know? Yeah, sounds so, great. Yeah, so I'm just so glad to be here with you. And thanks everybody who's joining. We're trying to wave as quickly as possible to you all. We're so appreciative you're here. Um, I'll go ahead and get started and just share a little bit um, about just kind of my story. So um, my story is uh, I kind of was brought up in two households and my parents were divorced. So I had my mom on a farm who there was no sugar, no soda. You ate to nourish your body only. And then we had my dad and my stepmom and my dad, I lost my dad to coronary artery disease and I've lost my stepmom to diabetes. So, but, and their eating habits were distinctly different. So my dad <laughs> was somebody who put uh, butter on his pizza crust and he ate birthday cake and ice cream every night after dinner. That was his thing. So, um, I'm sure many can relate. Yes. So, um, so that was kind of what was going on in his household. And the thing with my dad and it's kind of, it was kind of hereditary for me is you never knew that he was abusing food because he was tall and thin. I'm not tall, but I don't pack on the weight. A lot of people think it's a blessing. It was actually a curse for me. And I'll share why. And that's because um, when I was in my 50s, things were happening. Hormone issues, skin issues, brain fog, um, digestive issues, you know, sleep issues, all the things that I was attributing to being in my 50s. I just thought that's what happened. Sure. So, yeah. So after losing my best friend to brain cancer, I was 52. I decided to do Armand's 30 Day Selfie Living Program, jumped on and did it. This is where I learned so much. <laughs> I learned I was a sugar addict. And so you guys, while I ate healthy, my vegetables, my fruits, we didn't eat processed foods. Um, I didn't have sugars uh, or I didn't have cookies and stuff. As a, a kid, as an adult, I became a sugar addict. So Jolly Ranchers, Fireballs, and um, <laughs> Smarties. I'm not kidding, Julie. They were in every room of my house, in my pocket, <laughs> in my purse, in my car, my gym bag, you name it. So if I was stressed, I would eat it. If I was happy, I would eat it all the things. And so while I didn't gain weight from it, what was happening is I, because sugar's highly acidic, I was in a continual acidic state, which was causing all kinds of inflammation in my body. So those symptoms that I thought, okay, this is what happens. I'm, I'm in my 50s. You get old. Yeah. You just fall apart. Right. Right. And so when I did our 30 days healthy living program, which is basically, it's a, just a gentle reset. And we focus on eliminating, you know, addictive and inflammatory foods. We stay away from process. We eat real whole food and we use a few nutrient products to, to just support our and nourish our body along the way during this process. So that's when I learned I had sugar. Wow. I mean, sugar had me wrapped around her finger. Um, and also gluten. I didn't realize the pot belly I got from eating certain starchy foods and, and uh, you know, foods with gluten, it was the gluten. So when we eliminate foods and then you reintroduce them one at a time, that's when I just learned like, okay, Laura, sugar owns you, and there's enough in the world that owns me. I'm not 
going to have my food on me. And then gluten, just I didn't like the digestive distress I was on constantly in. So that was super helpful. And thankfully, my program helped me break up with sugar because I'm pretty certain I would have been down the same road as my stepdad, if not my stepmom, even though she wasn't blood because of the amount of sugar I was consuming. So that um, is what worked for me personally. And um, what's interesting, you all, is I'm gonna turn this over to Julie, but when I heard what worked so well for Julie, both of our stuff is actually compatible because That's people have done great. both and and been very successful so it was kind of fun we're like oh my gosh like <laughs> it's just great so anyway i am going to turn it over to you because i feel like your story is really um i love your story actually i feel like it just is a story of empowerment and i would just go ahead and share away girl Sure. Hop in, ask any questions. Okay. Um, so my story is slightly different, right? Mostly growing up, I was pretty fit and in good shape. And as I got older, I got heavier. Um, and it was 2018. I woke up one morning. It was like, I just can't do this anymore. This is the largest I've ever been in my entire life. Um, so 2018, right? Not that many years ago. I'm in my mid fifties. Um, and I have a rare autoimmune disease, which Sadly, that it wasn't enough. I was diagnosed in 2013 to get me jump started to get on a better health path. But for whatever reason, I was ready to do something different. So I need to share that um, I'm always trying. I, I, I was always trying, no matter my age, no matter my weight, or so I thought. So I did a lot of different things, which in the moment kind of worked and then quit working. So again, like Laura, you brought up such a valid point. Like this is our stories. Um, hopefully something we're going to share resonates with everyone, um, but you really have to find your own groove and, and what's going to work for you. So there was a time, so uh, Weight Watchers is going to be my story in a minute, but I tried it in the past and always had success. Awesome. I just guess I wasn't in the right headspace to stick with it, right? Um, and then I tried other things, right? Like I did paleo, keto, vegan, vegetarian, like I did all of it. It worked for a time. For me personally, those are too restrictive. Okay. So if you tell me I can't have the sugar, I want the sugar, you know, like, <laughs> right? Weight Watchers, the beauty for me is Weight Watchers doesn't do that. You want to eat the sugar candy bar, you can have it. It's going to be an insane amount of points. So for me, what works so well with Weight Watchers is um, the new, oh, I'm on the blue plan. They had a new lifestyle plan. I joined in January, 2018. My initial thought here was my stinking thinking was, gosh, it'd be sure nice to lose five pounds, 10 pounds. Like I didn't have any big goals and lofty goals in my head, right? Um, and 51 pounds later, I just can't, I get chills even like, I can't even believe I did that myself, right? So it's I remember the first week I go to, so here's the other thing. I'm very much social. I need to go do the group thing. I need to be held accountable, right? That all feels good to me. Um, I'm never embarrassed to say like I do Weight Watchers. And I'm actually proud to say like I did something and majorly oh, yeah. changed my life yeah. in my mid to late fifties, right? So um, there's no anyway, shame in our game. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I my first week lost seven pounds. That's crazy. And it was and it was pretty easy. So I was like far out. Like my whole goal was to maybe lose five or ten. I just lost seven. So then I told my girlfriend, she's like, oh, I'm signing up. I told my aunt, I'm signing up. So then I created not only my network of people at the Weight Watcher Studios, which sadly those all kind of closed down during the pandemic, um, but, but we were doing it virtually and I created my own little group of people. So in eight months following the plan, which I didn't think was that hard, um, there's a lot of strategies and things I had to employ to, to you know, keep me going and uh, it's still, I do those things still to this day, um, but I lost, I hit my BMI and lost 51 pounds. So, oh, oh my yeah, God. in my mid fifties, like I still can't even believe I, I can say that out loud, right? Um, yeah. What I loved about it for me is there's like over 200 foods that are no points. So it's on a point system, obviously. Mm -hmm. So here's me, the first meeting. Um, so eggs are zero and I love eggs. So I, I raise my hand and say, like, how many eggs before they turn into points, right? And she's like, well, you're not going to sit down and eat a dozen. I'm like, I don't know, maybe <laughs> if I'm really hungry, I might, you know, and I never did. But and then um, 
So there was enough foods. Like I was able to land on all the foods that are really healthy and good choices that I enjoy eating. I'm kind of not a foodie. I'm a one track pony. I zero uh, in on yep. this. Is, this works for me. Yeah. Uh, so I'll eat the same thing day in and day out for years. And I'm very unfazed by it. Um, but yeah, so what is unique about your program is if you are a foodie, you can still be successful. And the same with my program is I'm more similar to you, but if you are a foodie, either one of these programs, you can certainly be a, a foodie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so this isn't really an example of being a foodie, but I'm a movie <laughs> popcorn freak. So you have your Smarties and your, so like I never throughout my whole journey gave up my movie popcorn. It's not the healthiest. I totally acknowledge that. I'm not eating it every week. I'm eating it once in a while, right? And I'm not just eating a little bit. Like my husband and I share the big bucket, right? right. So, yeah. um, and I always laugh because, you know, that's some, some people will say to me, well, you're not living. Yeah, I'm living great now, right? Like <laughs> I'm still eating that popcorn, but I'm way happier, way healthier. It's yeah. much better for my body and for my um, autoimmune disease. So I did all that. So I'm never really proud of this, but I find it so interesting that my journey, I only followed the plan. I did not work out that whole time. I uh -huh. just couldn't juggle. It felt like a lot in my mind and whatever to juggle all of it. I started my I started my fitness journey after I hit my goal weight and my BMI. Um, oh. And then I'm not, I wouldn't, I don't really like to work out. So, <laughs> um, and so my goal became, I've got to keep trying things until I find something like, oh my God, I love this and I can hardly wait to do it again. Right. And then interest, so I, I found my things that I adore and love and I do them every week now. Um, but then people were saying to me, are you losing more weight? Because I was toning, my body looked yeah. like I was getting smaller, but I, I really wasn't losing any more weight. So, Isn't that I'm, awesome though? Because you were also probably gaining muscle. So that's why you didn't have the weight loss, but yet you looked even healthier. Right. And yeah, I love that. It's crazy. Yeah. And then your clothes just fit better. Oh. Well, it's funny because when I, so it's a little freaky, right? In the Weight Watchers plan, you get lifetime if you go six weeks maintaining your weight your bmi and so when i got there i'm like far out i'm great at packing on weight i can i just proved i can lose it i have no idea how to maintain it so i feel like every step right was figuring it out figuring it out figuring it out i love laura you posted something about making it a balance of like 80 yeah. 20 i think that's a great way to describe it that really resonated with me that I think that's how I've managed to keep it working and keep it going and yeah. turn it into a lifestyle for me. Yeah. So anyway, now, um, I let me, let me, um, let me add real quick, just so for the people yeah. who don't know what the 80, 20 is like, so basically it's 80% of the time you're sticking to your, your program. I'm eating clean 20% of the time. We're kicking up our heels. We're having our movie popcorn. We're having champagne and chocolate cake. cake. Yeah. Yes. And then we know that we have the tools to come back to that have worked for us to get back on. I call it my clean eating horse. You, you're going to call it back on my program. Yeah. Yep. Or so, just do Weight Watchers, whatever. Exactly. exactly. So for people who know, like there, I don't believe in restrictive, like <laughs> we have to live. I mean, you can't go to a wedding and say, Oh, sorry, I'm not going to yeah. be having wedding cake. <laughs> it's yeah. not going to happen, you know? So, um, but yeah, so I, that's, that's, I didn't mean to interject, but just for oh, those no. who didn't know. Yeah, so yeah, go ahead. ahead. So go ahead. now I feel like I, I figured it all out, right? So now I'm able to make it a lifestyle, though. Every day I kind of have to do pep talks with myself and remind myself, like, you think you want that because you have years of eating it and wanting yeah. it, but you really don't. You're going to feel like I talk myself all through it. You're, yeah. you're going to be inflamed. Your fingers are going to be tight. Like, yeah. um, so but it just gets much easier because it becomes more of a habit and a routine. And then regarding my fitness, um, I found things I love, but I continue to explore and try new things. So my mantra, well, my mantra just always is, right? You're never too old. It's never too late. And, and that's in every aspect of your life, right? So even though I found the things I love, pound fit, Palm Squad Fitness, Aerial Yoga, like I still want to go and try um, more fun things, right? Like you never know what's around the corner that might be really fun. So this year I want to try um, trapeze yoga. 
<laughs> and see if I like that. So it's not on a trapeze line or anything, but you are harnessed and suspended. So it looks pretty cool. I want to try that. There's some kind of bungee. You're so somewhere. adventurous. <laughs> well, which is really weird because I don't think I am, Laura, but. Um, Way more adventurous than me. I don't know that I would try that. I, I got, I, my hat is off to you. That is. I would talk you into coming with me if we lived close to, to each well, other. Maybe That's I would go if, I, if you were there. Maybe I would go with you and do it with <laughs> you, but you're well, so adventurous to go do it on your own. Like, and I was, uh, so that's a little lot, that's out of my comfort zone. I pushed myself. So the gym my husband and I joined um, offered aerial yoga. So here's me like, I have to go look at the room. Am I too heavy? Will I even be like, what am I going to be able to get in the silk that you hang from? And yeah. then I'm like, and then I'm going to be the old lady in the group, right? Like I'm probably <laughs> the oldest one in class. But you know, once I got out of my own head and let it all go, yeah. it was fine. And I'm usually saying to myself, you're doing pretty darn good for an old broad, right? Like That's these young, I... <laughs> these young people, you know, they're struggling and I'm maybe even doing a little bit better than they are. So, and I do it pretty regularly because I enjoy it so much, but I want it. So I first got there. I'm also very motion sick. I was afraid it was going to be like, Oh, I'm spinning and nauseous. Um, and the first thing we had to do is like lift, uh, you'll see my funny sock, lift our <laughs> leg up and put it in the silk. And so like I was struggling a little bit to stand on one foot and get the other up in there. And then I started freaking out. And then it's like, this is ridiculous. You're going to just freak yourself out. Stop all this bad self-talk, right? I loved it once I got out of my way. That's and amazing. I've been doing it ever since. I love it. I actually, um, I, I did yoga and just regular yoga in my youth. And in the last year, I got back involved in yoga. That seems to be, I, I feel I'm always so go, go, go that, I need something to ground me. So that hour in yoga, I just, you know, so that's yeah. been my new thing. And same thing as you, like, I'm like, okay, you get in the class and you're like, okay, these young moms are a lot more limber than I am. And they yeah. can move their body and twist their body and up over, you know, and I'm like barely get, <laughs> yeah. but at the end of the day, I feel like in doing it, I, I gained more flexibility and um, I just feel like it's so, much better for us. And so um, same type of thing. It's just, I'm not quite as adventurous of you. I'm more like, I find something, I don't know if you can see my Peloton. Yep. I, I love it. But again, that self-talk because there are mornings, like this is my office. So I sit here and I work and then if I'm gonna work out, it's right behind me. So I really have to say, get on your bike, Laura, move away from the desk and get on your bike. Like you, this is your priority make it happen. And, um, I used to, I even always tell myself, like, I'm, a, I always say the word, can I say it? I was like, badass. I always say yeah. like, I'm a badass. You are <laughs> and a badass. I, <laughs> but, and I but, love it's it. to, but it's to get my mood, if you would. Yeah. Lift yourself to, up. Yes. And to get that, uh, that I need to get to go exercise. So yeah. So, okay. So shifting gears a little bit, give me some tips that you feel are universal and they don't really even matter like what you're doing. What, what are a few tips and then I'll share a couple. Um, so regarding healthy eating, I, for me, the tips are find those good healthy foods that you like. Um, I don't cook or bake. I hate the kitchen, um, but my husband <laughs> does. My okay. husband does. And so um, he and I meal plan. We do a lot of prep. Okay. Um, I'm back to work on a regular basis, right? So um, in regards to working out when I could go to the gym, like I would bring my gym clothes, change at work and go straight to the gym and not come home because I knew once I get home, there's a lot of distractions and it's easy to go. I'm too tired. I don't want to go out. So right. I go straight there. Um, I'm very much, if I make a commitment, I'm, I do it. So um, that helps with like my virtual fitness. Once I sign up and commit to doing that, um, I do so. Um, eating out, I know the places I can go or I'll preview a menu before I go and I'll have a plan. Right. Or right. if I'm going to a party and I'm not really sure what's all going to be there, I maybe will eat some things at home so I'm not going out hungry. Um, right. And then I, I tend, if I keep myself satisfied, which is pretty easy to do and eat healthy choices, it's easier to make good choices. If I let myself get really hungry, uh, I could be yeah. bedlam, right? And yeah. I still do a lot of self-talk, like like I'll be driving the car. I don't know what it is. My husband and I laugh like, why does Burger King smell good? I haven't eaten Burger King in about a bazillion trillion years. 
but that charbroiled beef always does me in. And so, but I know like you think you want that. It smells yeah. good. And then I do this whole self-talk thing. You're going to eat it. You're going to be crabby with yourself that you, you know, so I just talk yeah. myself down yeah. or off of my thoughts yeah. on you, you want to yeah. eat this thing. Right. Yeah. Or I'll make, I'll make a plan like, okay, this week I really want the movie popcorn. So I've got to, right. you know, shift some other things in my week or my, my points um, to account for that. The one thing I did do, um, maybe different than some others doing the Weight Watchers and why I did it pretty, I think for my age, pretty quick in eight months was I didn't always use my fitness points mm -hmm. um, or activity points. You can gain extra points. I just stuck with the strict um, points in a day and I didn't add on or subtract or whatever. So that makes it a little would, simpler. Seems yeah. a little simpler. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Your so turn. I know. I um, So I was going to say, um, well, first of all, like, I loved how you talked about being prepared. So I have a food prep, I call it chop and yep. chop and chop day every week, but being prepared before you go out, I'm the same way. Okay, what what is there going to be there for me to eat? Um, and then um, I firmly believe we all have to move our body in some form every day. So whether it's taking a, a walk around your neighborhood, um, hopping on a Peloton, playing tennis, going for a hike. I just feel we have to have movement. Um, hydration is huge for me. Um, I, I feel it's plain water is the best um, way to hydrate our bodies and get what we need. And then um, what else was I going to say? Uh, move. Um, and um, Gosh. Oh, um, just getting outside for fresh air. I think that that's important. You know, so many times we're stuck in our offices, and especially this last year, just getting out for fresh air and whatever it is in the fresh air that you do, just getting, you know, some sunshine and some fresh air. And, um, and at the end of the day, you know, we d both do our self-talk, but I do feel that we have to give ourselves grace um, yeah. that we, you know, you can't, because women, we, we are our own worst critic and we can beat ourselves up and that's, not good for anyone. It's not good right. for us. It's not good for our family if we've just talked to ourselves that way. So giving ourselves grace and kind of like how you and I talked about a few minutes ago with the 80 20 rule, knowing that, like you just said, you, you have to shift things around. You're giving yourself grace because you're going to have your movie popcorn yep. and knowing <laughs> that it's a okay as long as we just don't keep eating our movie popcorn right. Right. every day, all day, you know. So, and I think that when we're gentler to ourselves, then we are more, more willing to be. Yep. Yeah, and more inclined, you're you're more inclined to be successful then. Correct. I think. Yeah, and I, I think it helps to have a network of people that are behind you and rallying. So as I was yeah. um, attending my meetings, like I befriended quite a few of those people. I brought them with to my gym. Like, come and try this class. It's amazing. You're gonna love it. Um, and then my girlfriends and my aunt and I would be texting each other, like, "How's it going today?" Or you know, like, "You got this?" Or you know, like, "Hey, I found this great product," or you know, whatever this great meal, look at this meal. It's like no points and it's delicious. And so Phil, like, so to have that exchange and support Four. with others. Yeah. I think is really, really um, critical to yeah. your success. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't know that. So when I first did our 30 days healthy living program, I did it with my husband. We actually did it at the same time. And I don't know that I, I think I would have quit <laughs> to be yeah. honest with you because the first day, the sugar withdrawal, the struggle was real for me. I mean, real. And so, and he's like, okay, well, we need to sit down and have a cup of tea, you know, get through this moment. I mean, my poor daughter-in-law, actually, she did the program before me. And she literally was checked in with me. How are you doing? I'm like, oh, my God, I want a damn cookie. Like, <laughs> was like I was going to post on <laughs> So <laughs> where am I? What, what are your, where are my Jolly Ranchers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and so to have his steady, you know, constant support, like, okay, we made our meals together. We talked about how we were feeling, um, and the good and the bad and the ugly. Um, and so like you just that having that extra support was just so helpful. Um, because I just don't think that we, you know, we're human beings. We're meant to intermingle. So doing anything alone is really tough. It um, is really tough. Well, and anything I think sometimes people don't even realize, and they kind of inadvertently sabotage. Like, yes. So yes. my mom would describe, describe herself as short and fluffy, and <laughs> when, and she is, and um, 
so when you're surrounded by that and you know certain ways of eating a lot mm -hmm. of times people don't understand it she'd be like so what's one whatever right like oh can you come over my girlfriends are going to be here and i'm making this that and this and i said well i'll come over and see your friends but i'm not eating this yeah. that and this you know yeah. um or i don't want all that stuff at the holidays like let's let's talk about like how we can modify like so yeah. it's hard like traditional foods for holidays keep some of it but like let's modify the rest of it right like what's the one thing perhaps yeah. you want to keep that you're used to always eating and then look for healthier right. options for all the rest i love it i love it all right and well, then Julie. find fitness yeah. activities that you ah. love that's right <laughs> that's right these are two yes. of mine i love it i love it yes and having a community that also does that as well is very supportive. I know like with the Peloton, we have a whole Peloton community. Yep. And there's people that you friend and you're yes. high-fiving yep. on, on the screen in class and stuff like that. So yeah, this the community support is so beneficial. Like I, I just love that. Well, Julie, I think this is amazing. And I loved hearing your journey. And I'm so glad you wanted to share. And, you know, especially the autoimmune disease. I think that's important because there's a lot of women as we age, we start to deal with things and um, it, it's real, it's real life. And we have to deal and we have to learn how to accommodate our lifestyles to work around. And you have definitely um, worked around that and made, you're thriving in your life. And I love that's what I get when I follow you on social is like, you're just thriving in your life. And I know the backstory, which not many people do. Yeah, I don't. And I don't always share it or talk about it, but you know, if anybody's yeah. on here that wants to know more, it's not that I don't want to share it. It's just, that's, I don't let it define me. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah. as and you're describing, your thank blog? you. What about um, your yes. blog? So I have, um, I've written one blog on my autoimmune disease. Um, so if you search on my blog for scleroderma and I forget the exact title, but that should come up. Um, so I share what it is, and um, it really interestingly affects mainly women over their 40s. So anyway, um, I share about it there. And if anyone wants to reach out, I'm happy to talk about it as well. Um, I've been super blessed that I don't have an extreme case. I am in a support group of women that have it. And every time we get together, like I think to myself, like I'm really lucky it could be so much worse. But anyway, um, I do blog, I did do a blog about it. And I did do a blog about my weight loss and my fitness journey. And I continue to post about those just because I want other women to yeah. realize like any of this doesn't have to define us. Um, I think I'm, so I'm hitting 60 in July and I think I'm in the best shape of my 40s, 50s, 30s, you know, like. Amazing, that's yeah. amazing. Is the link to your blog in your bio? Yeah, so if you go to okay. the link tree, link tree in my bio, um, you will see it's the, the tab is just labeled blog. And okay. then if, once you get there, there's a search um, bar up in the upper right hand corner, you can just type in. Or if, if you want, you can message me and I'll send you the link to read it or read my weight loss journey, my fitness journey. I pretty much talked about all of those. Awesome. Um, and no, some go. people say like, oh, delete all your, you know, earlier yeah. stuff on IG. I don't delete anything. Like Neither you can go way down to the bottom when I was first starting, you know, with the selfie stick and I was a big girl, right? <laughs> and I'm not ashamed of that. I'm proud no. of the journey I've been on and, and hopefully encouraging others that age should never dictate, nope. I don't know, nope. anything, nope. right? <laughs> Well, and, and you're a great example of that, Laura. Oh. You always inspire and motivate me as oh. well. Thank you. And I just love that you claimed your health back in your 50s. So that's empowerment right there, guys. It doesn't, like Julie just said, any, your age does not awesome. define you. It doesn't dictate you. You, you know, this is, anybody can claim their health back at any time. All right, you guys. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I have to do it. I feel really bad. People are commenting like one of my yoga teachers. Um, oh. and sadly, I haven't gotten to see her because of the gym closing. Just put love you, Julie. So like, oh. if people are commenting, I'm not seeing it. I'm so engaged with you, Laura. I don't want people to think like I we were ignoring them, right? Like, no, 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 no. We're just and so into guys, talking yeah. to each other. Yeah, and um, you can always go to Julie and you can message her and ask her questions. You can message me and ask me questions. We're happy to help and just share what we do, what we found, what works best. All right, you guys, have an awesome Wednesday. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, it was so much fun. All right, and also, friends, if you have something else you want Laura and I to chat about, 
drop us a comment. So we'll yeah. we'll come on in a few more weeks or something and talk some more. Although Laura's got a lot going on, but we'll figure something. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has a lot going on. I'm not the only yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all, all right. right. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, before we go, did you get the boots? Yes. No, I, well, okay. So let me, I ordered them. I got them. I, they didn't fit my feet. They weren't, I was like, oh, yeah. Don't it just was when that happens. Yeah, I was really bummed. It's like, but that's okay. That's all right. I, you know, there's other <laughs> things I can get. Um, but yeah, I'm on a new hat quest now. So we'll, we'll see what comes up next. But anyways, thanks oh, again. Everybody. Hats. Oh, <laughs> thank you. All right, you guys take care. We'll talk soon. Bye, Julie. Bye, everyone. Thanks.